Here's lesson four of the quadratic functions unit. This lesson is on quadratics in standard form. In part one of this lesson, we're going to finally learn how we can find the vertex from a standard form equation without having to go through the process of completing the square. To find the vertex, you'll have to remember a property about parabolas that states that they're symmetrical about the axis of symmetry. And so you remember what that is, let me draw a quick sketch of a quadratic function. If this is our quadratic function, the axis of symmetry is the vertical line that goes right through the vertex of the parabola. Because of this property, we can find the x-coordinate of that vertex just by averaging the x-intercepts of the quadratic function. Because notice this axis of symmetry is right in the middle of the two x-intercepts. So by averaging these two x-intercepts, we can find the location of the axis of symmetry, which then tells us the x-coordinate of this vertex. And from quadratic formula, we know an equation to get both of those x-intercepts. The quadratic formula tells us that the x-intercepts are equal to negative b minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a, and negative b plus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So to get the x-coordinate of the vertex, we just have to average these two expressions, which give us the x-intercepts of any general standard form quadratic. And when averaging values, we just have to add them and divide by 2. So let me show you what happens when we add these two values and divide by 2. So now that I have it set up, so I have the two x-intercepts being added and divided by 2, I'm finding the average of the two of them, or the middle of the x-intercepts. And now I can simplify this expression. Notice that both x-intercepts have a common denominator of 2a. So I could rewrite the sum of those two fractions as a single fraction over the common denominator of 2a. I'll simplify this adding negative b to just subtracting b. And then I see that I have a positive square root b squared minus 4ac minus a square root b squared minus 4ac. So those will cancel out. And I'm left with a negative b minus another b, which would give me negative 2b. So I have negative 2b over 2a being divided by 2. I could rewrite that 2 in the denominator as a 2 over 1. And then when dividing fractions, you keep the top fraction the same, but then multiply by the reciprocal of the fraction in the bottom. And then this would equal negative 2b times 1 is negative 2b, and 2a times 2 is 4a. But I could simplify the negative 2 over 4 to negative 1 over 2, giving me the final equation for the x-coordinate of the vertex as negative b over 2a. So if you have a quadratic that's in standard form, you can find the x-coordinate of its vertex just by doing negative b divided by 2a. And then of course, if you have the x-coordinate of the vertex, calculating the y-coordinate is as easy as just subbing in the x-value into your equation and solving for y. So let's go through a few examples where we'll be able to try out this new formula. Let's actually summarize it in this conclusion box here. It says, if we have the standard form equation of a quadratic, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, we can find the x-coordinate of the vertex using the formula negative b divided by 2 times a. And that works for any standard form quadratic. So let's go ahead and try example 1, where it says to find the vertex of the following quadratics. In the past, we would have taken the standard form and converted to vertex form by completing the square, or found the x-intercepts and then averaged them. But because we've done that process once for the general standard form quadratic here, we know it's going to simplify to just negative b over 2a. So we can go ahead and use that formula to get the x-coordinate of the vertex. In this quadratic, the a value is 1, b is negative 6, and c is 11. To solve for the x-coordinate of the vertex, I do negative b. So negative negative 6, which is positive 6, divided by 2 times the a value of 1. 6 divided by 2 is 3, so I know the x-coordinate of the vertex is 3. And then to find the y-coordinate of the vertex, I just have to take that x-coordinate of 3 and sub that in for the x's in my standard form equation to be able to solve for y. With 3 subbed in for the x's, I have 9 minus 18, which is negative 9, plus 11 is 2. So the y-coordinate of the vertex is 2, making the vertex the point 3, 2. Now let's go ahead and try part b which will be a little bit more difficult because we're going to get some fractions for this one. For this quadratic in standard form, we have an a value of negative 3, a b value of 2, and a c value of negative 1. To find the x-coordinate of the vertex, 
I do the negative of the B value, so negative 2, and divide that by 2 times the A value of negative 3. This would give me negative 2 over negative 6, which would reduce if I divide top and bottom by negative 2, I get 1 third. And then to find the y coordinate of the vertex, I just replace the x's in the standard form equation with 1 third, and then calculate its corresponding y value. When evaluating this, I have 1 third squared, that's 1 over 9, times negative 3, that's negative 3 over 9, plus 2 times a third, that's 2 thirds, and then minus 1. Negative 3 over 9 reduces to negative a third, and I could rewrite this 1 as 3 over 3. Now that I have a common denominator, I can just add and subtract the numerators. Negative 1 plus 2 is 1, minus 3 is negative 2. So the y-coordinate of the vertex is negative 2 over 3, which means my vertex is the point 1 third, negative 2 thirds. And now let's go through three examples where we put together everything we know about quadratic functions to be able to state all of its properties and sketch a graph of it. So for example two, we're going to look at the standard form quadratic, y equals negative 5x squared plus 8x minus 3. We're going to find its x-intercepts, then we're going to find the axis of symmetry, then find the vertex, and then sketch a graph of it labeling the key points. So we'll start by finding its x-intercepts. I know wherever it crosses the x-axis, so wherever it crosses down here, the y-coordinate of any point on the x-axis is zero. So to find the x-intercepts, I can start by setting y equal to zero and then trying to solve the equation. And to solve when a quadratic is equal to zero, we could try and solve it by factoring, or we could use the quadratic formula, or we could solve by completing the square. I think this quadratic is factorable, so let's solve it by factoring. First of all, the a value is negative 5, b is 8, and c is negative 3. Since a is not 1, I'll have to factor this by decomposition, meaning I'll start by finding the numbers that have a product of a times c, so negative 5 times negative 3 is 15, and a sum of the b value 8. The numbers that satisfy that product and sum are 3 and 5. 3 times 5 is 15, 3 plus 5 is 8. So what I do is I split this middle term into 3x plus 5x. And I'll leave the rest of the equation the same, and then I'll factor by grouping. From the first two terms, I can take out a negative x, and when I divide those two terms by negative x, I get 5x minus 3. And then from the last two terms, there's nothing other than a 1 that you could common factor out, but I will write that, and then divide them both by 1, they stay the same. And now I see that I have a common binomial, so I'll common factor out that common binomial. And when dividing the two terms by the common binomial, the 5x minus 3s cancel, and I'm left with negative x plus 1 as the last factor. And the product of these two factors would be 0 if either of the factors were 0. So I'll set both of those factors to 0, and then I'll solve both of those equations. The first one, when isolating x, I'd have 5x equals 3, which means x is equal to 3 over 5. And the second equation, I'll just move the negative x to the other side to see that 1 equals x, or I could rewrite that as x equals 1. So I have two x-intercepts at 3 fifths and at 1. So I think what I'll do is I'll go to my graph and plot those points. 3 fifths as a decimal is 0.6, roughly about here, and the other one is at 1. So the x-intercepts are very close together on this graph here. Let's go on to part b of the question where it says find the axis of symmetry. Well, the axis of symmetry is going to be right in the middle of those two x-intercepts. I can find its equation just by averaging those two x-intercepts. So for part two, to find the axis of symmetry, it would be at x equals, and then I'll average my x-intercepts. I'll average 3 fifths, which is 0 0.6, and 1. And to average them, I add them and divide by 2. 1.6 divided by 2 is 0 0.8. And remember, that's not the only way we can find the axis of symmetry. We could have used the new formula we learned in this lesson, the formula x equals negative b over 2a. If I used that formula, I would do negative b, so negative 8, divided by 2 times the a value of negative 5. So that gives me negative 8 over negative 10, which is, again, 0 0.8, which, notice, is right in the middle of 0 0.6 and 1. So you can find the axis of symmetry either by averaging the x-intercepts or using the new formula negative b over 2a. 
But either way, we found out the axis of symmetry is going to be at the vertical line x equals 0 0.8. So I'll roughly draw that in. And I know the vertex falls somewhere on the axis of symmetry. So I know the x coordinate of the vertex is equal to 0 0.8, but I don't know the y coordinate yet. But for part three of the question, where it says to find the vertex, I can state the x coordinate of the vertex as being 0 0.8 because I know it's on the axis of symmetry. But to find the y coordinate, I'll have to take this 0 0.8 value and sub it into the equation of my standard form quadratic for x. So I'll replace the x's with 0 0.8. And when evaluating that expression, I get the y coordinate to be 0 0.2, which means the vertex is at the point 0 0.8, 0 0.2. So on the graph, I'll move that point so it's at 0 0.8, 0 0.2. So it's really down there close to the x-axis. And now I can draw a rough sketch of this by connecting those points. And I may also want to be accurate with this and have the y-intercept in the correct spot. I know the constant value is going to be the y-intercept. Because if I sub in 0 for the x-values, both of those terms will be gone, and I'll be left with just negative 3. So I'll plot the y-intercept at the point 0, negative 3. And then because parabolas are symmetrical, if 0.8 to the left of the axis of symmetry, it's at negative 3. Moving 0.8 to the right of the axis of symmetry, it'll be at the same height. So at an x-coordinate of 1.6, it'll be at that same height of negative 3. And then I'll connect those points with a smooth curve. And there's a rough sketch of that quadratic relationship. Let's go to example 3. It's the same question, but for a different quadratic function. We'll go through the same steps. We'll start by finding the x-intercepts by setting y to 0 and trying to solve. Now, this quadratic is actually not going to be factorable. There are no integers that have a product of 22 and a sum of negative 8. So to solve this, we can try solving using quadratic formula, which would be x equals negative b, so negative negative 8 would be positive 8, plus or minus the square root of the b value squared, minus 4 times the a value of 2 times the c value of 11, all over 2 times the a value of 2. Now, if I simplify the discriminant, which is the part underneath the square root, I actually get a negative value. It actually simplifies to the square root of negative 24. And because there are no real numbers that when you square them, you get a negative 24, that would mean the square root of negative 24 is not a real number. So there are no real solutions to that quadratic equation, meaning there are no x-intercepts. So for part b, to find the axis of symmetry, since we don't have any x-intercepts to average, we'll have to use the new formula, x equals negative b over 2a. So negative negative 8, which is 8, divided by 2 times the a value of 2. That's 8 over 4, which is 2. So on my graph, maybe I'll draw in the axis of symmetry at the vertical line x equals 2. And the vertex is going to be on that axis of symmetry somewhere. So I know its x-coordinate is going to be 2. So I'll write that down for part C, where it wants us to find the vertex. And then I can calculate the y-coordinate just by subbing 2 in for the x's in my standard form equation. And if I evaluate that, I get 3, which means the vertex is at the point 2, 3. So I'll plot that point on my graph. And then the y-intercept actually doesn't fit on the graph that's provided, right? The y-intercept would be 11, and my y-axis only goes up to 7, so I won't be able to plot it. So maybe what I'll do to graph this accurately is get one more point on either side of the vertex. So let me calculate the y values for when x is 3 and when x is 1, just by subbing them in to my standard form equation. If I sub in either 1 or 3, I should get the same answer because they're equidistant from the vertex. Subbing in 1, I get 5, and subbing in 3, I get 5 again. So I have two points, 1, 5, and 3, 5. I'll plot those on my graph and then draw the parabola shape that goes through those points. And now let's go ahead and do our last question of the lesson, where we once again have this standard form quadratic, and we want to get all these properties of it. Starting with the x-intercepts, I can set y to 0 and try and solve the quadratic equation. This quadratic is factorable, so I'll solve it by factoring. And since the a value is 1, to factor it, all I have to do is find two numbers who have a product of the c value of 25, and a sum of the b value, negative 10. And the numbers that satisfy that product and sum, it's the same number twice. It's negative 5 and negative 5. Negative 5 times negative 5 is 25, and negative 5 plus negative 5 is negative 10. 
Because it's the same number twice, I know that what I have is a perfect square trinomial. It factors to the same binomial two times. It would factor to x minus 5 times another x minus 5, which could just be rewritten as x minus 5 squared. And now I have to solve for what value of x makes this equal to 0. Well, 0 squared is 0, so if I can figure out what makes x minus 5 be 0, when I square it, I'll get 0. So I'll set x minus 5 to 0, and if I solve that, I get an x value of 5. So my only x-intercept is at the point 5, 0. So I'll plot that on my graph. And if a quadratic only has one x-intercept, that means the vertex must be right on the x-axis at that vertex. It either is going to open above or open below. And based on our equation, I can see that the a value is positive, so I know this quadratic is going to open up like this. So the axis of symmetry, because the vertex is always on the axis of symmetry, the axis of symmetry must be at x equals 5. But what we can do, I can show you that it's at x equals 5 using the formula negative b over 2a like we've been doing. So for part b, to find the axis of symmetry, I'll do x equals negative b over 2a, which would be negative negative 10 over 2 times 1. So negative negative 10 is 10 divided by 2 times 1. That gives me... 5. So for part c, when it asks for the vertex, I know the x-coordinate of the vertex is going to be equal to the axis of symmetry. It's going to be at 5. And then to calculate the y-coordinate, I know it should be 0, but let's calculate it by subbing 5 into the standard form equation. And we've already figured out that 5 is the value that makes this quadratic be 0, but let's sub it in to double check. I have 25 minus 50, which is negative 25, plus 25. That gives me 0. So my vertex is at the point 5, 0. And then the y-intercept is all the way up at 25, so I won't be able to graph that. So to get an accurate sketch of this function, maybe I will get a point to the right and to the left of the vertex as well by summing 4 and 6 into the standard form equation. If I sub in 4, I get a y-coordinate of 1, which means on my graph, I can plot the point at 4, 1, so if 1 to the left of the vertex, it's at a y-coordinate of 1. 1 to the right, it's also at a y-coordinate of 1. And then how about we sub in another point? What about if x is 7? If I sub 7 in for x, I get a y-coordinate of 4. So the point 7, 4 is on the graph of this quadratic as well. And notice that point is 2 to the right of the vertex. So 2 to the left of the vertex, it will be at the exact same height. And now I can connect those points, and I've got a rough sketch of the graph of that quadratic function. Hopefully after completing that lesson, you have a good understanding of how to work with quadratics in standard form and be able to generate all of its key properties. Make sure you go to jensenmath.ca so you can get a copy of the free practice questions that go along with this lesson. Jensen